Hey everybody and welcome to 365 Phase 2. Um, I pray that you have been getting something out of these studies. I love seeing your comments down below, so please keep it up. Um, this week we are talking about obedience and as you have already, already can see that, um, you're going to get challenged like crazy this week. You're going to get tested this week. Let me just pre-prepare you. But come on, we have the victory through Jesus Christ. And even when you say that, it sounds like it can be kind of cliche. But actually, if we're going to grow and we're going to mature in this area, we have to recognize that we already have the victory in him. And we need to hold on to that victory. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much. For those that are tuned in, Lord, I pray that we are obedient to you. I pray that we listen to you. When you lead us and you guide us and you show us what to do, I pray, God, that we just cast our care onto you because you care for us. I thank you, God, that our hope is in you and our trust is in you and you alone. I pray that this week, God, we have great breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, breakthrough. Okay, so I'm talking about obedience and it's not a fun word. You hear the word obedient. You're not like, oh, I'm so excited about being obedient today. No, it's like pulls on your flesh. It's like it's frustrating. It's hard. It's it's so hard sometimes to be obedient to God, especially when you're going through a really hard time. Now, let's go to Hebrews 10 and 35. 10 and 35. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward that it brings you. Patient, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. And then you will receive all that he's promised. So I kept just meditating on this. I was meditating on the scripture over and over again. And the word translated confident is also used in the Hebrew version to speak of boldness in entering the presence of God. So as I was studying this, I just saw such a correlation between confidence and obedience. When you are confident, you obey. When you're not confident, you don't obey. Let me just give you an example. If somebody you know in your family that's really bad with money, that spends all the money, all of a sudden comes to you and says, hey, I have this new business idea and I want to take all your life savings and put it in this investment. But this person has proven over and over again that they just keep, you know, blowing their account, blowing everybody's, that keep losing money. They're in Ponzi schemes. You're not giving your money to this person because you don't trust them. You ain't got no confidence that they can give you a good return on investment. So you're not going to give your money to that family member. You can be like, all right, Uncle Fred, not today. Not today, Uncle Fred. That's not what we're doing because you don't trust him. And the same thing goes with God. When you don't trust him, it's very, very difficult to obey with him and what he's telling you to do if you don't feel like he's really going to come through. If you don't feel like he's going to answer your prayer. If you don't feel that, that instead what you do is you take life into your own hands and you're like, all right, I'm just going to have to figure this out myself because obviously God is busy over there with so-and-so. He's busy helping somebody else. So because God's not doing what he, you know, he needs to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump ahead of God. And no, God is saying, here, don't throw away your confident trust in me. Don't, don't throw away your boldness to enter into my presence. Don't throw it away. And I want you to imagine taking your confidence and putting it in the trash. And that's what some of us do. We, we lose our confidence in God because we've been hit with some really hard times. But instead, the Bible says that test, test and trials are good for our development and for our growth. This is not your time to throw away your confidence in God. It's time to st put your head, put your shoulders back, put your head up, put your chin up and say, no, I will face this thing. I will trust in the Lord. The greater one lives on the inside of me and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will be obedient to the Lord and I won't throw away my confident trust in him. I won't throw it away. And I want you to meditate on the scripture all week long. And then I want you to look up scriptures on obedience and confidence. Obedience and confidence. And you'll see every single time that when somebody obeyed, there was a reward. Come on, there is rewards for obedient, being obedient to the Lord. Now, I was reading this and, I, and I, this just stood out to me. Now, the longer the obedience takes, the longer for the promise to be filled. What do you mean, Heather? Uh-uh, God's grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. But you can hold up the will of God for your life because of your disobedience. You might be thinking like, how is that biblical? Let's, let's read the scripture again. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patience, patient endurance is what you need now, comma, so that you will do the will of God. 
period. Then, that word then. Then you will receive all that he's promised. The promise, the reward, the inheritance comes afterward, after obeying the will of God. The reward comes after the obedience. Are you willing to obey God with where he has you right now so you can get the rewards of what he wants you to do? I know all of us want the rewards. We want, we want the open doors. We want to be powerful for God. We want to do all this stuff for God, right? We want the car. You want all the material things. And, and don't get me wrong. I believe the rewards he's talking about here are earthly rewards and heavenly rewards. I believe that both of them are included in this. But you have to endure through this season and you have to be patient with God and patient with your process and patient with your journey. And then you will see the reward of what God wants to do in you. But so many of us are quitting along the process so we're not seeing the then the reward is coming. We don't see that part because we stop at the endurance. We stop at being patient. We stop at the obedience because we're like, God, you're taking too long. This is way too hard. It doesn't feel good. My flesh is being ripped apart, God. I'm frustrated. I'm upset. I just feel like you've forgotten about me. The thing is, the promise comes after you have done God's will. Have you done God's will? Are you willing to do God's will? The promise comes afterward. Where's your confidence? If, you're, if you have no confidence in God, then when the test comes, you're not going to want to be patient. You're not going to want to endure. You're not going to want to go through anything because you're just going to throw away your confidence because you don't feel like God is going to come through because you are believing God for healing and so-and-so died. So now your confidence in God is gone. Or maybe you've just had it really hard in life. Maybe things just have not worked out for you. Maybe it seems like you've had test after test after test. And you're like, God, what's happening? What's going on in my life? Are you going to come through for me? I mean, I'm reading this word. I'm doing what I know to do. And it just seems like it's not working, God. But God is saying patient endurance is what you need so you can see the promise. You got to be patient. I know it's hard. I know you want to give up at times. I know it's so frustrating when you don't see the results that you want to see right away. But I promise you, if you will stay faithful to the path and not quit when it gets hard, you are going to see some great rewards in your life. I always quote this because it's one of my favorites, Psalms 1 and 3. And they shall be like those trees that are planted along the riverbanks and along the rivers of water. Their leaf will not wither. And whatsoever they do, it's going to prosper. Why? Because they're staying planted and obedient. When you just are refusing to give up, you're just staying planted. You're like, nope, I'm going to do whatever God wants me to do. Nope, I'm going to be obedient. Nope, I'm going to walk in love. Nope, I'm going to forgive that person. Nope, I'm not going to worry. Nope, I'm not going to fear. I'm going to guard my heart against that. I'm going to be intentional about my time with the Lord. And I'm going to trust Him. And I'm going to keep my eyes fixed on Him. And I know it's hard sometimes. And I don't always know what God's doing. But I am determined, come on, to pass this test. I'm determined to be faithful to whatever God wants me to do in this season that I'm just going to choose to trust him. And it's like, it's, you have to get that back, that foundational thing back that says whatever he wants to do in my life, he can do it. Because my life is not my own. I'm a surrender to him. I give my life to him. And when you give your life to God, it, what, what I see in the spirit is people taking parts back. You're like, all right, I surrendered Jesus when I went down to that altar, when I got saved, but I just take a little bit, a little bit back because I don't have a confident trust that you can do what I think that you're going to do. So then instead of completely surrendering all, you just be like, all right, Jesus, I need that back. I need my man, that little man area back, Jesus, because you know, you don't do, you take it too long. You just take it too long, God. You don't trust him. You, you just don't trust him because I want you to think, just close your eyes, take a minute. Just close your eyes and think with me on this. Just Let's just take a moment. Think about that area where you don't quite trust God. That area right there. Yep. The one where you just, ugh, it's really hard. And you can feel it pulling on your flesh because your flesh is like, ah, ah. I like to trust in myself. I like to have control. I like to do what I want to do. I can't surrender that to God because that re that requires of me to completely surrender. And I can't quite do that. I know I serve in the church and I've been saved for all these years and I'm doing all this stuff. But that area, ooh, 
I struggle with surrendering that. And this week, I, I challenge you to study out that area and surrender it to him. Maybe it's contentment. Maybe you got to study out contentment this week and you get the scriptures and you write out all the scriptures on contentment and you meditate on them. And you just, as you begin to meditate on scriptures, and that's why I love Joshua 1 and 9, meditate on my word day and night and make your way prosperous and have good success. Meditate. What are you meditating on? Some of you meditating on your problems, meditating on how you're going to pay this bill, meditating on how you're going to do that, meditating on on the frustrations of your family. You're meditating on the wrong things. God is saying meditate on my word day and night and make your way prosperous. So meditate on contentment. Lord, I just thank you that I am content in you. I know how to, um, I know how to, by with a lot or with a little, no matter what. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength that I need. I have enough in you, Lord. I thank you that you've given me the right portion for where I am in life. I thank you, God, that I'm learning to trust you in a deeper level, in a deeper way. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're revealing to me this discontentment in my heart. Show me, God, the areas I need to work on. And that's what our prayer is going to be this week. Like, God, show me. Show me where I'm just... I'm not even trusting you. It might be in your marriage. You might need to look up some scriptures on nagging, right? Come on. Let's just let's just be transparent. Is it in your health? Do you need to look up scriptures on healing and, and guarding your tongue and only speaking life? It could be your finances. Maybe you're struggling with money. Maybe you've made an idol out of money. So God is saying, I want that area. I want you to surrender that area to me. Do you know that he owns a cattle on a thousand hills? Come on, he can he can hand you a million dollars, but would you be faithful with it? If you're not faithful with a hundred, God's not going to give you a million, right? Like, let's be faithful with small. But Heather, the world, mm -mm. I don't know what the world gives. I don't know what the world's daddy gives them, but there's a consequence for eternity with that. That ain't got nothing to do with you. As a believer, look at me as a believer, our heavenly father knows what's best for us and he's with us and his hand is on us and he's teaching us and disciplining us and showing us that we need to be faithful with small. You need to be faithful with small and it's okay. And we're going to get through this. Okay. We're going to get through this, but God needs your obedience. You keep going over that guy's house, but you know, you ain't married to that man. You're not even talking about marriage. You're like, what you doing? You wasting your whole time. (laughs) Like, you know he's not God's best for you. Or maybe you got engaged over the holiday break and now you're just like, you know, God, you know, what's up with this guy? You know, you know, is is he it? Should I stay with him? But God is like, I've been told you to break that thing off. What is God telling you to do? In my own life, I remember I would, you know, Pray for God's will all the time when I was a new believer. I mean, I still do. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely still pray for God's will on a regular basis. But I remember praying for God's will. And he said to me, he was like, why would I open new doors when you haven't closed the doors I told you to close? You're talking to me. (laughs) Oh, you're talking to me. Okay, I got you. Um, So (laughs) let's go over five really quick. Um, tips on building up your confidence and your obedience in the Lord. First one, repent on a regular basis and confess your sins to God. It's real simple. Just repent. I love to do it at night. That's my favorite time. I like to have my prayer time in the morning and at night I like to repent and confess my sins to the Lord on a regular basis. And one thing I pray is, especially not like I'm saying, oh, you're so perfect, but I'm like, Lord, I confess any sins, known or unknown, like just in case. I didn't realize I was sinning. I like, I repent of that too. Just in case, we're going to cover everything. Because when you're constantly repenting and you're confessing your sin to the Lord, your heart begins to soften towards him. Because what happens is sin is going to harden your heart towards God. But when you are soft towards God, then he can, he can um, it, when you're flexible towards God, he can flow through that. But if you're hard and cold, he can't get through that, right? You're, you have a part to play, right? Um... And I also mentioned this earlier when I talked about um, then you will see what God promised after you're patient and obedient to you do your part. Um, I want you to imagine this. What if I never decided to preach because of my past, right? Or what if I just chose to disobey God? God gives us free will, right? 
He's not going to force you to preach. He's not going to force you to obey him. He's not going to force you to spend time with him. He's not going to force you to apply to that school he's been telling you to apply for. He can't come down on earth and do it. He, but he works and he partners with us here on this earth, right? You have a part to play in this journey. And that's what I want to challenge you. When you repent of your sins and you're confessing, you're recognizing that, hey, I'm struggling in these areas. And when you repent, you're turning from it and you're going in a different direction. And you're saying, I'm no longer going back to the things that I once loved. Instead, God, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my heart. I surrender my marriage. I surrender my finances. I repent, God, for not trusting you. I repent for being angry at that Starbucks worker. I repent. Whatever that area is, I, I repent, God, for gossiping about my co-worker. I repent. Whatever the area is. Number two, welcome hard times. Come on. Welcome them, baby. Welcome them hard times. You might think, ooh, mm -mm, I don't like hard times, Heather. Who does? Who's just like, hey, I'll take some hard times over here, <laughs> you know. Um, trials are going to build your character and holiness, which will build your faith. That comes from the book of James um, chapter one. It's going to develop your faith. They're, it's good for you. And I know you might be like, mm -mm, it ain't though, but it is. It's, it's so good for you because it's developing endurance and strength in you to prepare you for the journey and what God has called you to do. So welcome. Just say, you know what, God, this is just part of the journey. I don't always understand it, God, but you know, I'm choosing to trust you. I'm just I welcome the good and the bad. Because the thing is, a lot of times we just want God's blessing, but we don't want like his discipline. And I had to learn to say, God, I accept both and I want both. Because if you think I need to go through that to pull out things in me that aren't like you. For example, I'm trying to wean. <laughs> um, I know if you've been following me, you know, this has been a struggle for me. But wean Roman from breastfeeding. He's two and a half years in and your girl's tired. But I am learning to discipline him and say, no, you can't have milk. I know you've had it for two and a half years of your life. I know it's made you comfortable. I know you love it, but you can't have any more. I love you. And I'm going to slowly wean him off of that and go on this journey of him learning that he doesn't need breast milk in order to be satisfied. And it's just a filler for him, right? So number three. Um, obey God on a regular basis, whatever he's telling you to do, whatever that looks like. He says, Hey, give this. Okay. I'm going to give it. Hey, do this. Okay. I'm going to do it. Hey, you know, call this person, tell them that I love them and the plans I have for them are good. Okay. I'm going to do that. You know? So it's just on a regular basis saying, all right, God, I choose you and I'm choosing to obey you today. It's making a conscious decision every single day when you wake up, God, I'm going to obey you immediately. Delayed obedience is still disobedience. Come on. You know, if we look at the story of Jonah, when he's in the, the, the belly of the shark, right? Or the whale. And, you know, he goes three days and he's going to Tarshish and he should have been going to Nineveh, right? And um, the funny thing about that story is like, God was still saying like, hey, you're going the wrong direction. Turn back around and go to Nineveh. Go to the place where I'm telling you to go. So now you're in obedience. But I wonder how many lives are being affected along the way on your journey towards disobedience. The people on the boat that were with Jonah, and we, I'm also going to include the scriptures um, on the main email so you can study that story out too. But th those that were on the boat with Jonah, they lost money and they lost ammo or they lost cargo. They lost cargo and they lost money because they had to throw all this stuff off the ship because all of a sudden there's this big storm. So they're trying to save their own lives and they're losing all this money because why? Jonah on the boat in disobedience. So other people are being affected by your disobedience. That's what happened in Jonah's life. All those people were trying to, to save his life and they had to pay a cost too. So there's people around you that are waiting for your obedience. Number four, meditate on God's word day and night. We talked about that. Just meditating on it. What does that mean? Like before I came down, I was meditating on, um, came down to record the past couple days. I've been meditating 
on Hebrews 10.35. So don't throw away this confidence, trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward that it brings you. Patience, endurance is what you need, Heather, so that you will continue to do God's will and you receive all that he's promised. And I just roll it over and over and again. Okay, patience, endurance is what I need so I can receive God's promise. I thank you, God, that I don't throw away my confidence in you. I don't throw away my trust in you. And I just keep rolling over the scripture and I keep repeating it. I'm not going to throw away my confident trust in the Lord. How do I throw away my confident trust in the Lord? With sin? That does a really good job because sin wrecks my confidence in God's word and what he says about me. Okay, but it brings a great reward if I don't throw away my trust. Okay, I'm not going to throw away my trust in the Lord. I'm going to stay focused on him. And the last one, stir yourself up in the Lord. Sometimes we wait for somebody else to encourage us, but no, encourage yourself. I love David. David said, I'm going to stir myself up in the Lord. And that's what you got to do. Stir yourself up. Don't wait for everybody else to tell you you're so great and you're so wonderful. No, the greater one lives on the inside of me. I'm going to stir myself up in this word. I'm going to meditate on this word day and night. I'm going to trust in God's promises over me. And I'm going to keep fighting for this. And I promise you, you're going to see results in your life. I promise you, if you stay planted, don't give up and you stay focused on the path. All right. I love you guys. And I'm excited for you guys to study these areas out. Let's go. Love y'all.